Hello, hello, this is Josh from Painting by Josh here. Here we have is the bare knuckle. So this is a lightweight compact spray machine. Awesome for, you know, the DIYs. The, I was thinking of getting out the brush and roller. Uh, this is the machine. For the pro painter that's going to, you know, regularly need to spray out some fences, garage doors or anything like that. Awesome machine. We've got a 650 watt motor. We've got a 0 to 3000 PSI setting on that. We can, uh, max delivery is 1.1 litres per minute. So she can put it out, that's for sure. The, it's very lightweight, like I said, in compact. Easy to, um, you know, lift up and walk around wherever you need to manoeuvre it to. So it's just under 10 kilos, so it's 9.7 kilos also. You've got a 12 months unlimited warranty. This is for the DIYs only. Uh, the pro painters or the contractors, obviously, you know, if you use it, using it a couple hours a week or something like that, she's going to last. It's going to do the job that we needed to do. And this is this is pretty much it here. So this is the box, obviously. These are exclusive to Inspiration stores, so you can get it from any Dulux Inspirations. The regular retail price on these, I'm thinking it's under $500. So for about $499, you can get a machine like this. And hey, we can go spraying, uh, like I said, garage doors, fences, the feet, anything like that with no worries. We have got a seven and a half meter lead that comes with this also. It comes with a 517 tip. It comes with actual the hand piece. So we're gonna open it up anyway. I'm gonna pretty much do the video from start to finish on unboxing it, setting it completely up, putting it in paint, putting on paint, then obviously wash up. Because I know the biggest issue with a lot of painters in DIYs, is they don't wash out their guns properly. So next time they come, uh, you come to use it, you know, always run into issues. So I'll show you how we can clean it out properly, store it back away, and you know, next time it's gonna be needed for use, it's going to be working just fine. Alright, here we have, so I'm just going to get it out now. So in here, we have a 7.5 metre lead. Here is the machine. So very lightweight, like I said, this is one finger. And I can hold it up pretty easy, so one finger. You got... The spray gun here, so this is very similar to the SG Graco gun. Obviously, it's got your tip guard plus your 517 tip also. Just take this off here. It's got everything you'll need to know about setting it up and getting what you need to sprayed. I'll run through that all with you anyway, so we'll keep it all going. So you got, you got a filter in here and a little cleaner, which is good. Well, this is pretty much it. It's very easy. Just take off the, the your little cover plastic from your house. And this is where your lead connects to, obviously. Just grab my two edge two-edge knife, such an awesome tool. These are from Zorcorp. Get these at Inspiration stores also. But we will just go cutting off the, make sure you don't go cutting into the lead or anything like that, because you will definitely end up with blowout and paint, paint ending up everywhere. There we go. So we've got the lead out anyway. So they should be exactly the same at both ends, so it shouldn't really matter which which end you 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 decide to connect onto your machine and then your gun. So these are both same threads. So either or either machine or gun, uh, they will fit in. Obviously just take out the you got the center plug here. Just prevents anything going getting into it why. Getting stored, you see, you can 
pop them back on if you want. And then, as I said, here I'm just, does screw on clockwise. We want to make sure always, most important, everything that's ran with high pressure or anything like that, we always want to do up with a shifter. We've got the barco shifter here. So everything, you, you, nothing you want done up hand tight, especially when you're running something under pressure. So what I'll do, just so sit down here. So obviously just tighten it up. You don't want to overdo it, but you want to make sure she has got some, she is nice and tight. Just like that, that's enough. That's plenty. And then what we can do, we can run out, we can wind out the lead now. So I'll just show you what we'll do. Wind out the lead. You never want to go crinkling up the lead. You never want to, to, to have um, a bend in it or anything like that. You always try to want to make sure it's always rolled out nicely. All you have to do is give it a bit of a twist. Very similar to winding out your garden hose or anything like that. Very similar. So that's pretty much it. Um, so obviously there's the other end connected to the lead, uh, to the machine. And then now we can, we, we can connect this, this end goes obviously onto the end of the gun. Same, same also this is clockwise. But with these two, because you've got two threads, you're gonna need two shifters to hold this one in place that this one's on top of the top of the gun and then they tighten it up your lead to the gun so this is yeah clockwise also you don't want to do it too much you know you don't want to cause too much tension on it but so there we have it that's pretty much set up so you've just got to get the lead you always try to do a surge protection lead also because if anything goes out or power blows you will damage the machine so you always want to make sure you have a surge protection lead on when you when you're spraying also okay so here we are we've got the, the power plugged into the surge protection lead we've got a full drum of paint here ready to go it's always good to have a couple of drums of water for backup or you know when you when it comes time to wash out you've already got them there ready to go what i always like to do too i always like to dunk your suction hose in some water first that way you just wet it up so it's eliminating a lot of dryness that will build up onto your onto your hose okay So now we're pretty much all right to go. We're all connected up. Make sure both of your, your connections are tight going from your lead to your machine and from your lead to your, to your gun. And then pretty much from, from here on, we can open, open a fresh drum of paint. This is Columbine Monument. This is in the Dulux uh, Weather Shield Maxi Flex. Awesome, it's a self priming product. You can go straight over pretty much bare timber, you know, render anything like that also. So what we're going to do, we're going to lift this up the back here. Now we can put the, this, this is your prime, the little one that's connected to your suction hose, okay, and this is your prime. So this one sucks it up and this one primes out your paint and your water, the little one here. So you can always have always have your bucket of water what I always like to do separate these two leads have the prime valve sitting in the in the bucket of water okay and the other one your suction hose can go straight into the paint okay so as you can see we've got them separated we've got the suction hose in the paint 
we've got the prime valve hose in the water. First of all, what we want to do, we want to prime through the paint, through the machine, and into your prime valve and into the fresh water. But first to always take out your tip before you go trying to run out, spray prime your paint or anything like that. Because over time, running paint through when you are priming it or anything like that, you are going to wear out your tip a lot quicker. So it's pretty much when, when you've primed your gun and you're ready to start spraying, that's when we put in the tip. And then obviously when you're washing up, you just run a bit of water through it, take it out and then wash the rest of your gun out straight with water without the tip in. So depending on whatever way you want to run it as well, you can have your tip guard on this angle and you can be going horizontally across or you can turn it on your side and be going up and down. Depends on what you prefer also. Yep. So I said, just make sure all your connections are always tight and checked before you start running your paint through. Nothing worse than not tighten up one of your, your connections and then paint going everywhere. So it could cause you more time and effort and then what it's worse than actually setting up the machine. Okay, so here we have now, like on most machines, you've got your prime switch here. This is pretty much on all machines here for it's a Graco, Wagner, bare knuckle. The prime valve will always be pointing in the downwards direction, that's prime. Spray is always on a horizontal angle. So that's when we go, obviously that's in spray position, this is in prime position. So we've got the paint hose into we've got the hose into the paint now we can start priming through so what's going to happen the paint's going to suck up here it's going to go through the machine and out through into the prime hose so you got your little off and on switch down the bottom here okay so what we'll do we'll turn it on okay and then on this side on this side here here you've got your pressure so this is your pressure control so see it's got little pictures on it also that can give you a fair indication of you know what finish what sort of pressure you're going to be using I really don't think it's really important to have a pressure gauge on because at the end of the day I don't really run anything off what pressure it is you know a lot of people will be like hey what pressures do you run this or what pressure do you run that I'm like the pressure that I run is pretty much with until until I eliminate tailing I'll keep my pressure up if there's a bit of tailing on each side I'll just keep the wind the pressure up just a tad until you eliminate that. I'll show you when I go spray anyway, but I'll show you exactly what I mean. But he, here's the process. You want to have it as low as you can down when you start the machine. So now you got your pressure all the way down. We want to turn the machine on over, over here. Okay, so I've turned it on. Now we can start winding up the pressure. Okay, and what's going to happen, you're going to see, start to see it coming out here very shortly. And you see it starting to come through the gun, into the, into the lead, so you start popping through. Okay, as soon as it hits the water, you can turn it down, because that way you've got prime lead up through your suction hose, through the machine, down through your prime lead, into the pot of water. So now, you're pretty much ready to go. She's all been primed, that's how easy it is. Now, once it's been primed, you always want to make sure your pressure is always down, because it's going... Turning from a prime position to a spray position on the side here, okay, with your pressure up, it will damage the motor. So always have your pressure all the way back down, okay, while it's on prime still. And then what we can do, pressure down, we can flick it to spray position, we can wind up the pressure, okay. Okay, so that was just building up pressure through the lead, okay, and into the gun. What we've got here, we've got the 517 tip. We always want to make sure, okay, you've got the prime valve in here, always release the pressure. So that way you've got no pressure in the, the lead or the machine, and, th and that way your tip is going to go in a lot easier. If you've got pressure inside the hose and the gun and you're trying to put on your tip, you're going to find it really hard. I'll tell you that. So always release all your pressure and then you can put your put your tip in. Okay. So 
So there. So that's in spray position. With the your sharp point facing outwards, okay, that's in your spray position now. So this will give you the 517 fan. The five stands for inches, so you've got to double that. So if you've got a 517 tip, it, this will give you a 10 inch fan. So you're just doubling the first number and that will equal out with what size fan in, in inches you're gonna get. So now we're ready to go. If you do get a blockage, if you have got um, you know a bit of debris or anything in your paint it could cause a blockage so in saying that when you're spraying and you push down your trigger and if it isn't working simply just turn it around like this and this is the inject right and then all you have to do is put down your your trigger and that will free up any any blockage in your gun or your lead so now we're pretty much ready to go. We're all tightened up. We've got the tip on. We've got the pressure down, like I said. You always want to keep the pressure down while you are putting on your tip. Okay, so now we're ready to spray. So what we're going to do, pressure's still down, okay? Flip it to spray, okay? And then we can just turn the pressure up. You've got your different pressures here, so your roller, for rolling um, your prime so your prime here when you're cleaning and priming out the gun I'll show you this a bit later on when it comes to wash up okay but then you got your low vaporization and then you got your strong vaporization so whenever you're spraying a fence or anything like that especially with a 517 tip because it's not the smallest of tips so but it's not the biggest of tips also so it's about a halfway halfway tip size but with anything like when you're running this you do want to be running pretty much at a strong vaporization especially when we're doing some fences and everything like that so what we've got going on now We've got it primed, we've flipped it to spray position, we've wound up the pressure. We pretty much should be right to start spraying. So this is gonna be the first time that I am spraying out of this machine. Like I said, I've teamed up with the Inspirations Australia. See what it's like, yeah? So we'll just do a little tester anyway, but this is going in Colour Bond Monument. Awesome colour. But here we go. So pretty much the way we do it also like I said you just want to so that there is pretty much an awesome pressure to be running the 517 tip that you get with it we'll just go back over here so what what have we got what have we got going on here so we haven't got all the way up we've got it backed off probably you know a centimeter or something like that shows exactly what I'm talking about with the tailing so if I turn the pressure all the way down okay to this position we'll go over here see how we've got no lines or anything down the side we can call it tailing or train tracks depending on where you are or what you want to call it but even that that's here you'll see see how we've got that exactly what I'm talking about see how we've got the tailing on each side or um, The tailing that's there now, it's because you haven't got enough pressure running through the machine with what tip size you've got in your gun. So pretty much for a 517 tip, running the bare knuckle, you do want to have it sitting, you know, up to a strong vaporization spray, okay? So that way, just show you as well, but Like this is, um, you know. Well, I'm pretty impressed. So that's, yeah. So that's how quick and easy it is to get out of the box, obviously set up from brand new, prime, Turn up your pressure and start spraying. So like I said, this is a 517 tip and we've pretty much got, got it, you know, not all the way up, but because she does run up to 3000 PSI, this machine also. So, you know, there's, there's not many products that will, I will run over 3000 PSI. There's pretty much no product um, that I will have 
a, a gun running over 3,000 psi. Usually it's sitting between 1,700 to 2,500 psi, and that's that's pretty much the ultimate pressures for what you'll be needing to do on an everyday basis. If it's doing fences, garage doors, we're gonna see how it performs, and we're gonna see at the end of the day what what the outcome is. But we'll quickly go over here also. I'll show you exactly how it sprays through the machine. Okay, so. Always spray with a mask on if your interior, exterior, doesn't really matter. It's always safer. Keep your mask on. Okay, so there we have it. There is the first coat. So, you know, you might spend a, spend a little bit of time taping up and covering up your surroundings, but at the end of the day, you know, we can spend half an hour taping up and what, 30 seconds a coat compared to, you know, you're probably looking, especially with a bare fence like this, you'd be looking probably an hour per coat. So if you're doing two to three coats, you're looking probably three hours with a brush or roller with three coats. Doing three coats with it being taped up and sprayed, you're probably looking, you know, 45 minutes. So a big difference into you're throwing on or you're spraying at least two to three times the amount, the microns that you would be with a brush. So you are spraying on a lot thicker coverage with one coat of spray than what you would even get two coats with a brush. So. You know, when you're spraying three coats by spray gun, it's really equivalent to, say, six or seven coats. So, you know, the coverage is unbelievable coming out of a gun also. You can't beat it. Can't beat it. But, just quick tip too. A lot of people too, they fan it down like that, you know. I always like to have my wrist lock and loaded. You know, so even if I'm come down to the bottom, I don't like to fan it like that because See this compared to where I haven't got any like that. So I always pretty much like to go down and up. Keep your wrist locked in and that way you're gonna keep the exact same profile and finish the whole way through. Okay, so you wanna hold it pretty much between 20 to 25 centimeters away from your surface and you wanna keep your gun always level never flicking your wrist or anything like that that's when a lot of painters DIYs end up with overspray everywhere so we don't like this we can eliminate a lot of that uh, problem okay so the process from setting up, unboxing to connecting all the leads, the gun and everything like that, to priming it, um, painting it, and now the process, the final process, probably one of the most important, other than painting, of course, would be wash up, cleaning up. If, if the gun isn't washed out properly, you are definitely going to run into uh, problems down the track, no matter what. You know, there's many a times that I've got to a job and gone to use it and the previous painters didn't clean it out properly and yeah, you know, you can spend a lot of time, days, hundreds to thousands of dollars in repairs to try to, you know, get the machine back to what it, what it originally was. So, hey, take that little bit of extra time, um, to make sure it's cleaned out 100% and then we're not gonna have to, have to worry about, you know, running into dramas down the track because it hasn't been cleaned properly. Okay, so, it's still got pressure in it. Still got our, our hose 
in the paint. So first process from here, what we want to do, always take out the tip. First thing, take out the tip, throw it in the bucket of water. Okay, then wind down your pressure all the way down. Okay. And then what you want to do, you want to hold your prime pose, okay, and, and turn it from spray to the prime position, okay? So that way you've released all pressure that's inside the machine. Next, you want to go grab your fresh bucket of water, okay? Your fresh bucket of water, you want to take out Okay, your suction hose, put it straight in the water, okay, give it a good clean. Big two, you should only be running water-based products through this sprayer. This, this sprayer isn't designed for solvents or any two-pack enamels or anything like that. So any water-based product, she's ideal for. So okay, so I've dumped it in the water, I have gave the hose and everything a nice clean. She's still got paint in it. So what we want to do now, we want to... While we've still got the pressure down, we want to, because we've got it in still prime mode, okay? We want to turn the pressure up and what we're going to do, we're going to be sucking water up through here and it's going to be pushing all the remaining paint in the prime hose back into the drum and as soon as you start to see water come through the prime hose wind it back completely off so there's no pressure okay so i'll show you the process anyway we've got the suction pump in the clean water okay we've got it in prime position we're going to turn up the pressure okay see how now it's starting to shoot out water all right so as soon as we start to shoot out water we can put it in the other drum, okay, in, in the drum with the with the paint hose. Okay, so now we've primed water back through it. Now what we want to do, with the pressure down, we want to flick it to spray position, and then we want to turn up the pressure. Okay? We do not have the, the tip in either. So now what we want to do, you want to actually have the pressure all the way down, have it on spray position, Put, hold your trigger on, and then slowly wind up your pressure. Until you'll, you'll notice it goes from paint to water because the water will start splashing out a bit more. It's a lot thinner product. So as soon as you get the paint go through to water, then you just wind down your pressure again. All right, that's it. Because it's such a little gun, it's not going to hold much pain inside it. So, you know, in two to three seconds after you put it, put your trigger on, you're pretty much going to release all your paint that's inside your lead, and it's going to just start coming out with water anyway. So it's not going to take long. So now, the paint's been completely flushed out through the gun. It's been flushed out through the lead. Okay, so now, what we want to do, we want to put the lid on the paint so it's not drying out. We're finished with that. Now pretty much what we want to do, we just want to repeat that process again. So it's always wind your pressure down when you're going from spray to a prime finish, always from a spray to a prime position. Even if you're going from a prime to a spray or spray to a prime, you always want to make sure your pressure is always wound all the way down. Okay, so now we're just going to flip it over to, to prime, put the pressure back up. And we can... So, you know, you can keep on pumping this, the water through it, okay, for a couple of minutes. And then after you've pumped it through the prime hose, Wind down the pressure again, flip it to spray, wait till the pressure builds up, and then you can just spray the remaining water out. This is just water coming out. OK, 
Okay. So we've pretty much shot a couple of litres out of the one drum. She is a bit dirty now, obviously, because I was priming the paint and everything back through it. So now we just want to wind down our pressure, turn it to prime position, take out. Take out the two leads out of the first bucket of water. Transfer it to a new fresh bucket. Okay, we're gonna always use two buckets of fresh water, even three, depending on what you wanna do. So yeah, put your hose back in, okay? And then we just do the exact same process again. Make sure your pressure's down, whatever position, wind it up. pressure still in prime position as you can see it's pretty much running clear water now that's what you want you always want your gun to be running um, you know pretty clean water it doesn't have to be crystal clear but as long as it's not really pain uh, water we're pretty much right to go so I've cleaned out the prime hose it's running clear water now we'll flip it back wind down your pressure flip it back to spray wind up your pressure okay and just hold this down until it blows out nice clean water and then that's pretty much the the process to cleaning out your gun or your machine so now as you can see As you can see, she's spraying beautiful clean water through the gun. Beautiful clean water through the prime. That's a good indication that your gun's completely cleaned properly. Now, the process from here is turn your pressure down. Turn it to, you can even leave it on spray because from there, the last thing you wanna do is blow out your tip because you will have still remaining paint sitting inside your tip so now pretty much just turn up your pressure spray out whatever paint you have in your tip until it runs clear okay, flip it over do a couple of reverse from each side to back Right, and now, yeah, we're, we're pretty much right to go. So even now, you want to wind down, your, wind down your pressure, turn it to prime position, turn off the machine, okay? And unplug. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the process from unboxing to connecting and setting up the gun to priming, to spraying, to washing out. So hopefully this little video can help a few people out there, DIYers, even some painters. You know, this little machine, like I said, it's exclusive to Inspiration Paints. It's light, it's compact. Uh, you know, a 12 months unlimited warranty to the DIYers under $500 and you know this machine can tackle you know as you can see here done all these fences today with very little effort really nice finish actually also so really impressed so that's that's pretty much it this is obviously the bare knuckle the bare knuckle it is painting by Josh here. Hope you find this video useful and helpful. And let me know if you want me to put up any other videos or anything like that. You know, equipment that you'd like me to do reviews or anything on. I'm happy to. Much love. Thank you for always watching.